Joining us in the studio for this week's health segment is Dr. Elizabeth Nichols, Assistant Professor of Radiation Oncology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Radiation Oncologist at the University of Maryland's Greenbaum Comprehensive Cancer Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. You help a lot of people who have uh, breast cancer. Before we get to the, the new treatment, how's the current treatment work? What does it do? Yeah, good question. Um, so for early stage breast cancer patients, that's actually the majority of women diagnosed with breast cancer in our country at least. And so the general treatments for early stage breast cancer include typically a combination of surgery followed by radiation therapy for many women. In terms of surgery, there's usually two different options. One, which is a mastectomy, where we remove the entire breast, or the other is a lumpectomy, where we remove the tumor plus a little bit of tissue around it. And when we give a lumpectomy, we always follow that up with radiation treatments afterwards. What, what percentage would you say of breast cancer patients wind up having some radiation? Uh, so the majority of women in our country end up undergoing radiation therapy as part of their care. So when we take all women with all stages, it's roughly 60% of women in our country. Okay, so you now have this this, this brand new device called a gamma pod. Yeah. Uh, talk about that and, and how, how it is different. Yeah, so the Gamma Pod is a device that was developed at the University of Maryland uh, Department of Radiation Oncology with our chairman, Dr. William Regine, as well as one of our medical physicists, Dr. Cedric Yu. And it's a device very specifically dedicated to breast cancer treatment. The way the Gamma Pod actually works is women are able to receive the radiation therapy in as few as one to five treatments, as opposed to the normal treatment, which is usually anywhere from 16 to up to 35 or so. What, uh, so what speeds it up? So we're seeing a shot of the device, and now mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a, a woman being sort of suspended over a bunch of radiation emitters of some sort. Sure. Yeah, so what makes this device different is we're, av we're able to give the radiation with a much higher precision. And when we do that, we can deliver a higher dose of radiation per treatment, but in a fewer number of treatments. What does that mean for side effects from, from radiation? Yes, that's a good question. Um, so while we're still undergoing some clinical testing for patients, we do believe, based on some of the different analyses we've done in the computer for women, that this will result in a decrease in long-term side effects because we'll be able to get a lower dose of radiation to other healthy organs like the lung, the heart, as well as the normal breast tissue. What, what's the process like to, to get something? You weren't directly involved in getting it approved, but, but how, it's a question that somebody who's thinking about getting on that type, table might mm -hmm. want to know. How thoroughly is it tested? How much do we know about its, its success? Yeah, so that Gamma Pod has actually undergone very rigorous testing, um, not just by our department, but also through the FDA. Uh, so we recently completed the FDA clearance process, and that's what led to the FDA approval. Uh, we've done a lot of different testing, uh, and we know with 100% uh, certainty that the device is accurate within fractions of a millimeter. Let me uh, remind our viewers, uh, if you have a question about breast cancer treatment in general, uh, you can give us a call. We'll have the number on the screen. You could also tweet your questions. Twitter address is at MPT News. Uh, it's been a little while. We, we did a program on another new radiation device. It mm -hmm. was a proton yeah. treatment center. H how's that differ? Yeah, so that's a good question. So proton therapy is a little bit of a different type of radiation. Uh, there's a whole unique device generated just to deliver proton therapy. And when it comes to breast cancer treatment, we generally look at proton therapy for women who have locally advanced breast cancers, which means women who have breast cancers usually in the lymph nodes, or in women who need radiation a second time around. The gamma pod is really going to be more for women with early stage cancers, and so that's kind of how the um, patients will differ. Could, could this eventually change the, the standard treatment regimen for, for breast cancer? So that's what we're very hopeful for. Uh, so we've actually done some uh, clinical trials before the development of the gamma pod where we actually gave the radiation before doing surgery. And as I explained earlier, typically the normal pattern is that women would have surgery first followed by radiation. In that study, we actually found that in several women, we were actually able to get rid of all of their cancer with giving the radiation beforehand. And so what we're hopeful for with the gamma pod is that with the increased precision that we can give, which will also allow us to give an increased dose of radiation, that we might find a cohort of patients where we might be able to give them radiation alone, and actually they wouldn't need surgery. Now, certainly that's not a standard right now. We'll be doing some clinical trials to, to test that, but that's what we're actually very hopeful for. So, so right now, this is one device in, in one center mm -hmm. 
How, how does it get rolled out? Yeah, good question. Uh, so we actually, uh, the Excision Company, which is the um, co-developer of the GammaPod, uh, we actually have four institutions that will have the GammaPod device within the next year. Uh, so we have the only device that's been clinically tested at the present time, uh, but also UT Southwestern, uh, Allegheny General in Pittsburgh, and then actually Ottawa Cancer Center uh, in Canada. Are, are there other uh, cancers, other conditions where it might be helpful? So it's a great question. So this type of radiation is helpful in other cancers. However, the gamma pod itself is very specific for breast cancer only. And that's why we actually think this device will be probably so successful because it's really developed and made and designed around the breast cancer treatment. Talk about um, screening recommendations. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the state of the art in terms of what sort of screening women should have and, mm -hmm. and when they should have it? Yeah, so this is actually a very controversial topic, as I think many are aware of, um, and that actually came from the United States Preventative Task Force, actually coming out with some recommendations a couple years ago, which actually changed what we had always thought uh, women should have. Um, I'd say at this time, all of the cancer societies, so the American Cancer Society, the breast um, cancer societies, we all still recommend that women undergo screening beginning at the age of 40. Um, and so that's still something that, that is recommended. However, just like the United States Preventative Task Force recommends, there really needs to be an individual conversation with the patient and their physician about the risks and benefits of, of cancer screening. I think another new development in cancer screening has also been the advent of 3D mammograms or tomography. Uh, so a lot of our patients will ask us questions about that as well. Um, and so one of the areas where that technology we think is going to be very beneficial and has been shown, shown to be uh, beneficial is in women who have dense breast tissue. So that was also a controversy that came up a couple years ago about the density of women's breast tissue and the ability to accurately detect cancers in those women. Let's uh, take a phone call, Prince sure. George's County. This is Harriet. Harriet, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to ask the doctor, and I think she just mentioned it. I had turned the TV down. The difference between the uh, 3D mammogram and the regular mammogram, I heard it say it's because of the density, the thickness of the breast. I'm going to hang up so I can actually hear what she had to say. Uh, Harriet, before you go, wh why do you ask if, if I can ask? Well, because I've had mammograms before, and uh, last year when I went, uh, I was given some information for 3D, and I didn't know enough about it, and I didn't call Medicare, because I'm 74, and I didn't call Medicare to find out if it was approved or not, so I denied it. So I would like to have more information, because I have the problem with thick density of my breast. I've had that problem all my life. It's very thick. Thank so, you for calling. We'll, we'll get you an answer. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, so one of the things that's different with the 3D mammogram is instead of doing kind of two views, so your standard mammogram will kind of take the breast um, and compress it this way as well as this way. Uh, with the 3D mammogram, they can actually do an infinite number of sections, if you will, so they can get images kind of in a three-dimensional view of the breast. And so what that allows um, the, soft, the computer softwares to do is actually do a better look at the dense or the, just the regular dense tissue versus any potential nodules or calcifications and so forth. There is a slightly higher radiation exposure to women when we do the 3D mammogram. However, in the grand scheme, uh, as physicians, we don't feel that that's something that's significant enough that it should, women should not undergo that testing. Let's go out to the Eastern Shore, Worcester County. This is Robert. Uh, Robert, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Robert, are you there? Yes, I am. What's your question, sir? Yes, I wondered what the, uh, if the insurance companies pay for this uh, new treatment. That's a good question. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I clarify, are you referencing the GammaPod treatment? I think the GammaPod. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah, so it's a great question. Um, so the GammaPod treatment, there will be a variety of ways that we can use it to treat breast cancer. So certainly we're very excited about giving it in the preoperative fashion or before surgery, but there will also be ways to give it afterwards. Um, for sure, we know that it will be covered um, afterwards uh, as that will be considered kind of part of the standard type of radiation therapy, just a new device to deliver that. Um, when we're looking at it, 
in the preoperative fashion. Again, as I mentioned before, we're going to be doing that in the context of clinical trials. Um, and so typically, um, some insurances will cover that uh, in the context of a clinical trial. Other insurers might cover it outright, but that is something that we're working very closely with uh, the excision company, our National Radiation Society, as well as the local insurers to help provide coverage. And it's interesting, the, the previous caller talking about the 3D mammogram had mm -hmm. had an insurance question that prevented her from going forward. Right. Do you know anything about how that's typically covered? Yeah, I mean, so generally, I think when it comes to cancer therapy, whether it's the treatment or the 3D mammograms, uh, we always ensure for our patients that we're gonna make sure that they are provided coverage by their insurer before we deliver treatment. We would never wanna give the treatment and then have the patient receive a bill afterwards. Right. And, and in terms of the, the reason you want people to get mammograms mm -hmm. and the reason that you're happy of, about the, the fact that so many of the cases you treat are early stage, mm -hmm. how important is that? So it's very important because early stage breast cancers are so very curable. Um, in our country, the cure rates for early stage breast cancers are 90% or higher for the majority of women. Whereas when women have a more locally advanced cancer with lymph node involvement sometimes or uh, the skin's involved, the survival rates decrease uh, somewhat significantly. And so, you know, this is a very curable cancer. Uh, it's something we can detect early, and so we always encourage that for women. Let's uh, squeeze in one more call. Sure. Anne Arundel County, this is Sophia. Thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yes. I am like, if I go first time like 58 years old, and they told me that I have to repeat because they see something in my right breast. I go repeat uh, a mammogram, and later they said, no, no, nothing, uh, it's a mistake. And last year I went again, and they again say, we want to repeat the mammogram again because we see something in the right hand, uh, right, right breast, and I am so afraid. They put me in uh, so much radiation. With what? Sophia, this we're short true. on time. I'll get you an answer on the air. Good luck, and thank you for calling. What would you advise? Yeah, so um, especially for women who have dense breast tissue, as I described, when you kind of compress the breast only in two ways, uh, sometimes the tissue can overlie, and so the radiologist might think there's something a little concerning when there truly isn't. Uh, that's why they do the additional testing. Uh, again, in the grand scheme, um, as physicians, we don't feel that the radiation from those studies is, is so significant to not warrant those studies. Dr. Nichols, thank you so much thank for you. your time. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.